At every stage at Clean Water Services, we think about innovation. That is, how can we do something better? How can we do something cheaper? How can we do something that benefits our ratepayers? Clean Water Services has been really using a more holistic watershed management approach to connecting gray, green, and the natural treatment system together. That requires significant innovations and in R&D effort. With the population growing in Washington County, we wanted to be able to discharge year-round from the Forest Grove treatment facility. We wanted to focus on biological phosphorus removal at the treatment plant and then do the ammonia removal in a natural treatment system. So we chose a vertical flow wetlands to do that. We discharge the treated wastewater from the plant. It goes over some rock beds uh, that were specially engineered. And in that process, uh, there's a biofilm growth of ammonia oxidizing organisms that grow on the rocks, and they remove the ammonia by oxidizing it to nitrate. This is the first application of this technology in the United States. You know, having a wetland component between the steel and concrete to buffer the chemicals and the the processes that go on before you deliver back to nature has been a tremendous benefit to water quality. We're just picking up on what Mother Nature has been doing for millions of years. It is a really effective, low cost, low energy solution for small and medium sized utilities to implement if they're looking for a nitrification removal system. Floating island is just basically a floating wetland on the lake. It's not a new concept, but in order to really provide that cost-effective solutions, we want to test that and to really understand the design, the um, development before putting floating island in. The plants are, are planted upon this plastic material. It's porous and so the roots grow down through it. These roots do a number of different things. Uh, they provide oxygen, which the plants take out of the air into the water. They also provide a variety of enzymes uh, at the surface of the roots, which help to degrade organic matter that's in the water. And then the plants uptake nutrients, primarily ammonia, nitrate, and phosphates. And those nutrients we want to remove from the water column because they promote algal growth. Presently in our four cells, we have one control, and then we have three different technologies. So there's two commercial technologies. And then the third cell is actually a design that we generated here at Clean Water Services that is substantially cheaper than the present commercial models, probably about one fourth the cost. The data that we have so far is we can get down to ammonia levels about 0 0.02 milligrams per liter in these floating wetlands, which is just absolutely amazing. Phosphorus is a limited resource. To grow enough food fast enough for everybody, you have to have phosphorus in your fertilizers to fertilize your agricultural land. One of the problems with phosphorus, as we're depleting it, there's no new phosphorus deposits being created. We're mining it and extracting it, and we get lower and lower quality ore. The loss strip process, which is fundamental to uh, phosphorus recovery, was developed here at Clean Water Services. I thought if we took the waste activated sludge treated it so it would release the phosphorus and magnesium, squeeze the water out of it, the water contains the magnesium and phosphorus, send that directly to Ostara. Technology like this that recaptures locally and reuses that nutrient locally is, is a big deal. It's one thing to talk in the abstract about phosphorus scarcity and then phosphorus pollution. It's another thing entirely to be able to hold a bag and demonstrate kind of the fruits of our labor. So we have the whole suite of smart systems and to help us making decisions and protect the environment and the community. The basic level is your physical infrastructure. So this could be a pipes or pump station or like a creek or river. So there where you want to control your system. The second level is really the sensors and control. So that will be your flow gauges and your water quality sensors and your continuous monitoring devices. The third level is about the communication 
application. Because when you have a sensor, you have a data, how do you trans uh, transmit it to your workstation so you can see that real time, so you can make real time decisions. So the first level is really having that visualization, the, the software that you are able to use. This is a real time control stormwater system and it's important because it mitigates the adverse effects of land use changes. We have a camera so I can actually see see what's actually happening out here. Everything you see here is on a web dashboard through the Internet of Things. So anywhere I have Internet access, I can log into this system and see its performance trends. So all the information is there and it's real time. Um, so you can see instantaneously what's actually happening. Here the people are really curious. We are not people who just strive to meet our permit. We strive every day to try to do things better.